Hey guys, so today I am calling myself out for products that I have not used in months. Even though I feel like I have a pretty curated collection, I, the size of my collection, I'm very happy with it. I feel like I've got a lot of variety, but it's not too big for my liking. But I still have some products that kind of slip through the cracks and I forget to use them. So I was looking through my collection and picked out some products that I know I have not reached for in months. Some of these I can't even remember the last time I used them. And I'm going to talk about why. The thing is, I don't dislike any of these products. So they're not things that I think I will declutter. I think they're things I'm just going to try to make an effort to use more. Maybe I'll keep this little box, um, like, I don't know, on top of my vanity or something just so that I can remember to reach for these. And yeah, <laughs> let's just let's just get into it though. Um, I feel a little bit ashamed for some of these because some of these are things I have raved about. They're things I love, but I just haven't been using them. So first thing is this NYX High Glass Primer. I loved this primer last year. And lately, like this throughout the past, I don't know, like six months or so, I just haven't been into primer. And I've been trying to pan like my NYX Angel Veil. And so this one just hasn't been it on rotation for me, even though I really like it. Maybe this is something in the winter. Maybe I'll roll it into my project pan so I can kind of get more use out of it because I do really like it. It's nice and hydrating, but it's not too like greasy hydrating, you know? And it's just got a nice kind of luminosity to it. I have the shade Moonbeam, which I think is the lightest shade. Yeah, it's a beautiful primer if you are into kind of glowy primers. Although I think I heard that they're discontinuing the high glass range, which is kind of silly to me because this is a beautiful primer. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I gotta pull this back out. The thing is I just struggle with primers because I don't know how to incorporate them into my routine anymore. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I know primers are almost like a skincare step, you know, especially this one. It's almost like a glowy moisturizer in a way. I don't like to apply primers over sunscreen because I'm afraid it's gonna move them around, maybe lift them up or kind of disrupt the sun protection a little bit. So Maybe I need to start making a point to use primer underneath sunscreen, but then some textures of primers I don't feel like work well underneath sunscreen. So let me know. What do you guys do? But I think I'm going to try to use this more in the winter when my skin gets a little bit more dry because it is a perfectly nice primer. Now, speaking of primers, I'm getting off on a tangent here as usual, but I recently got a sample, actually two samples of the Smashbox Vitamin Glow Primer in a Sephora order. And... I think I'm in love. I'm wearing it for the third time today. I feel like it really does make my foundation go on so much smoother and it helps it last longer and not start to look as like dry and cakey towards the end of the day as it otherwise would. So that really took me by surprise. Maybe that's the primer that finally makes me like believe in primers, but Anyway, here's a product that really the only reason I haven't used this is because I've been painting other products in this category, but this is the e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. And this just goes to show why I don't need to have more than like two or three powders in my collection at a time, but I currently have five. And so this one just hasn't been getting used. It is one of my newer ones, and I've just been trying to pan my older powders. I do like this powder. I feel like it's got a little bit of coverage. It's a nice kind of smooth looking powder on my skin, so it's nothing against this. I just haven't used it in quite a while because right now I'm painting my Jordana one. I was painting like the e.l.f. what is it called? Prime and Stay finishing powder earlier this year. Before that I was painting the Physicians Formula one. So this one just has gotten put on the back burner but it is a beautiful powder. I just don't need to have as many powders at a time as I have in the past year or so. All right so a palette I'm very sad to say I have not used in a long time. I feel like it's definitely been at least three months since I used this. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you've seen me use it more recently than that, <laughs> but I don't remember using this for a while, the Shared Planet Polar Bear Palette, and I don't know why, because I love this palette actually so much that I bought a replacement for it earlier this year because I was forced to declutter a few palettes that my cat peed on. It's a long story. I actually had to get rid of it, and I immediately replaced it, paid full price for it. I just knew I wanted it back in my collection immediately, so, um, you know, I don't regret replacing it at all, but I, for some reason, I think... Even though I love this palette, it's a very kind of wintry palette to me, especially being called Polar Bear. And all the shades in here are very kind of icy and wintry, but I'm gonna have to do some kind of like one week one palette or something with this in like maybe December or January, February, because it really is a gorgeous palette. And I love the shade Avalanche. 
it is such a beautiful like duochrome like icy blue so pretty there's so many beautiful shades in here it's a very beautiful cool tone palette I just I keep forgetting to use it because I have like 20 or so palettes now all right a few other eyeshadows and I feel like this this goes to show that I probably don't need to have a lot of these like singularly packaged eyeshadows because I forget to use these I've got two ColourPop Super Shock shadows here um, I have the shades Bill and Liberty. These are the only two Super Shocks that I have left. And as much as I lust after these Super Shock shadows, when I have them, I don't end up using them often enough and then they start to dry out. I have the shade Bill here. It's a beautiful, like, matte, sort of mauve dusty rose. But look how crackly and crumbly it is. It's still, like, I'm still able to get color payoff from it. But it's just getting so dried out and it makes me sad and... You know, I, I love this shade, but for some reason, I just reach for eyeshadows within palettes so much more often, so I probably just don't need to buy Super Shock shadows ever again, even though there's some shades that I really want to try, but I don't know. I've got to come up with some kind of better system to actually use these. Um, then I have the shade Liberty, which this is actually the one I've had for the longest. It's this very, very metallic, like, bluey silver, and this one actually has not gotten dry and crackly and I'm still able to get so much on there. This is one of the like less squishy ones. They definitely vary in texture. I mean look at that gorgeous silver. This was actually in my project pan earlier this year mainly just to get use out of it not to like hit pan or anything and I did use it you know a good handful of times in there but it's still like I've barely made a dent because it is a much more like firm formula and you get like a ton of color payoff with just one swipe so Gorgeous, beautiful for the winter again. So yeah, that just makes me sad because I was so excited about these when I bought them and I feel like I just not use them often enough. And they're not the kind of powder shadow that's gonna last, you know, five plus years. Um, and then another product I actually bought earlier this year and in a way I kind of regret buying this. This is the Super Goop Shimmer Shade eyeshadow in Daydream. So this is an SPF eyeshadow and okay, I actually did use this on a recent like weekend trip to Savannah. I was like walking outside a ton, so I felt like that was a good opportunity to bring this and use it. I think this is a great eyeshadow or like eyeshadow base to wear when you're going to be outside a lot because it just kind of gives you a little bit of extra sun protection on that area. But prior to that, I had not used this in so long. And unfortunately, even though I bought this in the spring of this year, 2021. It says it expires February 2022. So I only have a few months left of this eyeshadow, at least um, a few months left to be sure that I'm still getting like the sun protection from this. It does have a combination of chemical and mineral, octosalate and zinc oxide. So I would not want to rely on this for sun protection after that expiration date. Maybe it'll still be like creamy and usable by that time, but it just kind of bums me out that I had like less than a year to use this product before the expiration date and I've hardly used it in the time that I've had it so far. So this might be another thing I put in my project pan just to use it as much as I can before that expiration date, but it just makes me kind of sad. And this is $24 for just this one single shadow and I get that you're mainly paying for the SPF, but the shade itself is just very kind of one-dimensional. It's like a nice kind of champagne-y, rosy color. I mean it's a pretty color, I just feel like I have so many shades like this from, you know, a million palettes. It's just nothing special, so kind of wish that the shade were a little bit more interesting, but um, it's a pretty shade just for, like, throwing it on your eyes and calling it a day, but I'm, I don't know. I just haven't been using it. I probably don't need to have a whole lot of these types of, like, individual single shadows floating around in my collection. Honestly, the same, though, goes for any magnetic singles because... I also have not been using a lot of my magnetic singles recently, especially the ones that I have from like ColourPop mostly and Makeup Geek. Other than the ones that I um, included in like my one month one palette series, um, these three blues right here we have ColourPop, Beam Me Up, Baseline, and then this is Makeup Geek Pegasus. Those three, don't remember, the, I couldn't tell you the last time I used those. Same with um, La Playa here from ColourPop, that like mint green. Yeah, this one, Snake Eyes, and then this is Grandstand from Makeup Geek, which is a gorgeous color. I just, I always forget 
to use these because I just, I love palettes so much and I'm always trying to rotate through, through my palettes that I just never get around to these. So again, maybe next year I'll have some kind of system where I have like one of these in my project pan at all times just so that I'm using them all. But I've got to get better about using my magnetic singles. All right, another eyeshadow I don't remember the last time I used is this Becca um, Light Gleam Primer and Topper Liquid Eyeshadow. I have the shade Refract, which is like this sort of gray, dusty blue, and then the topper is this kind of duochrome pinky blue color. Really, really pretty colors. I don't like the topper at all. I feel like it takes forever to dry, and it ends up kind of creasing and just fading really quickly, but I do love the primer side. It's really pretty as like a base or to use as an eyeliner. So I, yeah, I just keep forgetting to use this probably because I keep it like at the back of one of my eyeshadow drawers. So maybe I need to just put this in my like top drawer of like everyday products just to hopefully get some more use out of it. Again, potentially another project pan item for the future, but I can't have a thousand products in my project pan all at once. I've got to come up with a better system where I'm using all my project pan items, but I'm also remembering to rotate through these kinds of products that are often neglected, but that I don't necessarily want to have in a project pan. Maybe I need to have, I used to do kind of like a rotating monthly makeup basket, and I kind of stopped doing that just because I like to kind of have full reign of my whole collection throughout the month. So my Shop My Stash videos are really just, I pick out products to use for a look, and then I do the look in the video. And that's it but maybe in addition to that I'll have some kind of like monthly makeup basket of just products that I want to make a point to use throughout the month we'll see we'll see all right a concealer that I have not used in forever this is the Pacifica liquid cover concealer I really have just been focusing on other concealers this year to try to finish the Too Faced Born This Way I did finally finish a couple months ago and then right now I'm kind of unofficially trying to use up my Milani Conceal and Perfect so this one has just kind of fallen by the wayside, but I would eventually like to pan this. I kind of just like to focus on my oldest concealer, but that doesn't mean I should just not use my other concealers for that entire time that I'm focusing on another one. So I don't love this one for the under eyes. I feel like it disappears from my under eyes, but I did once try this as a foundation and I actually thought it was really pretty. So that might be how I use this up. Or maybe I'll try mixing it with foundations, that sort of thing, but I have not used this in a long time, so. I need to try to pick this up soon. All right, a few lip products. I love all of these. I just haven't gotten around to using them in a while. First up, I have the Physician's Formula Healthy Lip in Tulip Treatment. I love this lip color. This is one of my all-time favorite reds. As much as I love this, I don't know why I haven't used it. I've just been using other ones, I guess. But this is gorgeous for year-round. I think it's a beautiful summer red because it's kind of like a watermelony red, but it's also really pretty for like the holidays too. Just a great kind of all-purpose, cool-toned red. I love it. And it's one of those things that I won't repurchase once it either runs out or expires because um, I no longer purchase from Physicians Formula. I miss them so much, though. Yeah, it still smells fine. I've had it for a couple years now, so I really should probably try to use this more often, and I, I love it, too. All right, and then a couple of lip glosses. This one I used in my full face of Undone Beauty, and then I don't think I've used it since. This is the Undone Big Papa Gloss in the shade Watercolor Rose. It's basically a clear gloss. It's got, like, a light tint to it, but do you guys remember in my Undone video where this was, like, spewing out, like, splatters of gloss from the tip? It's not doing that right now. But it had something to do with static electricity. One of you guys shared like an article that you found that explained that phenomenon. It was the weirdest thing, but I pulled it out and it had like these two antenna that were like squirting out little drops of gloss into the air. It was very odd. I guess, I guess it's not doing that anymore. But anyway, really nice formula. It's kind of a balmy gloss, really pretty. I have no reason that I haven't used it other than I have just been panning other glosses this year and therefore neglecting this one. I need to change that. I need to like maybe put this in my purse or something because it really is a lovely gloss. And then another one I haven't used in a while is the Nude by Nature gloss in Tea Rose. This is a nice like rosy pink color. Yeah, no reason, again, no reason that I haven't used this other than the fact that I have pretty much just been painting a lip gloss all year long. Once I used one up, I rolled the new one in. So maybe once I use up the one I'm currently 
panning. I'll kind of take a break from panning lip glosses so that I can just kind of use all of them. That is one thing though that's tricky about project panning is you get so focused on using one thing that you just forget about your other products. So I need to be better about that, especially as we get into the new year, as I start a new project pan. I want to start being more mindful of that. And I do think maybe some kind of rotating makeup basket is going to be the way to help with that. Um, okay, the last product I have probably only used once or twice since I've acquired it. This I did receive this in PR. It's the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencil in Roxy. Beautiful royal blue. Royal blue is one of my favorite colors ever. And this is a gorgeous shade. I think I love like jewel tones like this in the fall. Really nice creamy formula. So I have no excuse as to why I haven't used this. I think this would look gorgeous with that shared planet palette um, or just any look, you know? Why not have a pop of blue eyeliner? I do love colorful eyeliners. I guess I've just been using other eyeliners. So haven't used this one in a while, but it is gorgeous. So I need to change that. All right, so those are the products that I realized I have not used in months, which is kind of embarrassing, especially given that I do try really hard to rotate through and use all my products. Sometimes products still end up slipping through the cracks and they get neglected, so I am going to be making a point to use these more. Yeah, I really just wanted to make this video to put these products at the forefront of my mind so that I hopefully can get more use out of them now. I'd love to hear in the comments, do you have any products in your collection that you haven't used in months? And if so, why is that? Is it just because you forgot they existed or is it because you don't like them or because you've just been using other things? I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Maybe it'll make me feel a little bit better <laughs> about these products. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. And hopefully I'll talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.